Hey, this is Walter Jones. This is Austin St. John. And you're listening to Ranger Danger. Go, go, Ranger Danger. Welcome back to Mighty Morphin Ranger Danger. This is the podcast where we watch episodes of TV's Power Rangers, specifically the Mighty Morphin variety, and we talk about it afterwards and then sometimes before. My name is Matt. Michael. Hey, guys. That's Michael over there. We're going to watch episode 109 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers today. It's called Storybook Rangers Part 2. Before we get to that, I would like to tell you something. We have a website. Shocking, I know, but... It's a pretty cool one because we have a list of all the creatures, the monsters we've seen on Power Rangers, and we rank them. We also have show notes and just a big list of all of our episodes that you can check out. That's rangerdangerpodcast.com. If you want to send us an email, like the ones we're going to read out in just a few minutes, send us an email, rangerdangerpodcast at gmail.com. If you're preferring Twitters, you can send us Twitter tweets at rangerdcast. We're also on Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Google+, and we have a shop. It's rangerdangerpodcast.com slash shop, where you can buy all sorts of cool junk. Uh, I would like to tell you something as well. Yeah. I love you. Uh, me? No, just our listeners, not oh. you. Oh, fuck. Damn. Okay, that's fine. I'm don't, sorry. don't love you either. <laughs> Why do you love the listeners? Oh, just, you know... In gen- I mean, we're going to look at some emails now. Oh. Just, it's nice to see emails from people, you know? Yeah, no, I, I do love our listens. You guys are great. Yeah, all 12 of you. <laughs> it's more than 12. 13. Barely. <laughs> all right, uh, emails. Yes. Yeah, so I've got a bunch, and I'll, let's just go through them. Yep. Um, Where's our first one? First one is from Rick. Hey, Rick. Rick's been on the show. We all know Rick. Yep. Um. So... Rick is saying that he's been looking at IMDb and specifically has been reading through, like, associated entries with this new Power Rangers movie that will be coming out in 2017. Okay. Uh, So, looking at things like uh, the production designer, Mm -hmm. who apparently worked on Avatar and War of the Worlds. Oh, okay. Which presumably makes them a competent production designer. I mean, those movies looked okay. Visuals weren't the problem with either of, either of those films. No, so. so, yeah, you know, yep, that's that's good news. Um, music by Ron Wasserman. What? Is that a... a pa- look, okay, here's the deal, before yep. we get to it. IMDb is entirely user-generated. Sure. I would say that it probably means we are using the Power Rangers theme. Right. Assuming that it is a legitimate entry from somewhere. Um, and they have to credit him. Eventually. And he is credited because he wrote the theme. Yep. Rather than... He's doing the score in the doing film. The score. I mean, look. <laughs> I think we can all dream. I would love that. Just a couple of sentences like, fight. Yep. Or five for one. Yep. Um, oh, that would be so good. Yeah. Green I want... Ranger shows up. And just a copy of Go Green Ranger Go. Yeah. It's never going to happen. If we get to the third movie and we get White Ranger Tiger Power, we will be a happy man. Well, I, I don't want to spoil it for you, but that seems unlikely. Um, costume designer's resume. Yeah. Uh, worked on several seasons of Parks and Rec. Oh, great. There's lots of Power Rangers on that show. Yeah, I mean... You know, this stuff that, is hard to judge. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to judge. That might absolutely be the perfect person for the job. Yeah. Um, and I imagine costume design wouldn't necessarily extend to, like, the actual production of a Power Rangers suit. Sure. Like, that person is probably involved with the concept art stage and figuring that stuff out. Yep. But they could still be very good at it. Who knows? Uh, concept artists listed with, like... Credits from Guardians of the Galaxy. That's good. The guy who designed the star-shaped spaceships of the Nova Corps. Yep, those were awesome. Those were awesome. So, uh, two art directors who worked on Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol and Tron Legacy. I loved both of those films. Both movies about giant robots fighting giant monsters. Wait, no, hold on. I got that wrong. I th- Look, I think that easily the best part of Tron Legacy was its production design and its art direction. Yeah, or the score. 
Or, okay, or Daft Punk. Yeah. But... <laughs> They're pretty good. I think everyone knew going in that Daft Punk were going to do a good job. Yeah. No, I loved... I know that Tron Legacy is a bit divisive, but I 100% love that film. I mean, yeah, I think, look, even if you don't love it as a film, yeah. which I understand, I think it's a great-looking film. Yeah. And the other art director, uh, art directed Godzilla and Pacific Rim. Wow. Now... If you sit like if you were looking for obvious yeah, choices, frame of reference, those two are it, right? Yeah. Wow. I didn't see the newest Godzilla. Did you, Michael? I did see Godzilla. It was good. Um, I feel similarly about it that I do about Tron Legacy. Right. It's not a great film, but it's definitely a great looking film. Okay. It makes a couple of narrative decisions that are like. Yeah, I don't really care enough about Aaron Johnson. Like, yeah. I want to see the giant lizard fighting the dude. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, Godzilla does his laser breath into a monster. It's all pretty good. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Especially because I'd forgotten Godzilla had laser breath. Oh, really? Yeah. And up until Godzilla used his laser breath, and I was like, yeah, Godzilla's got <laughs> laser breath. I think it's key to his character motivations. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why does Godzilla want that? Because he's got laser breath. It's more like when you know that you have laser breath, it gives you a sense of confidence that you can handle most situations. Yeah, that's true. I think that's where Godzilla is coming from. Yeah. He's like wandering into things, not very prepared, but he also knows that he has laser breath. breath. Worst comes to worst, I just get shoot a laser from my face. Yeah. (laughs) It's a good fallback. Uh, So just Rick ends the email by pointing out that he's used the word excited five times in this email. So we're excited too. I mean, I'm trying to be excited. I think I'm mostly nervous. Yeah, I I get that. I think because like, I'm always going to love Power Rangers, no matter what happens, right? I think we've established that with this podcast, but... I would be perfectly happy to live in a world where everyone loves Power Rangers. And I think this movie could do that. Or it could make everyone go, yeah, Power Rangers is still shit, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's a very valid point. For me, though, Power Rangers, historically... Yes, has been a bit shit. Yeah. (laughs) It has. So if I get another Power Rangers that's a bit shit... Yeah. It is that I'll add it to the pile in my mind of a bit shit parent. Sure, kids. yeah. Whereas, if it's great, that's really exciting. And I think, too, especially after talking to Kyle last week, yeah. it sounds like, and I'm very confident that, we've got a fantastic Power Rangers story just around the corner. Yep. So, if the movies are washed, that's fine. I've got this rad comic that's on the way. So. Yeah, I, I guess my only thing is... I guess my only thing is, you know, like, it's not that if it's bad it will ruin Power Rangers forever. It's that if it's bad it makes it less likely we'll see different Power Rangers things in the future. Yeah, I get that. Because it'll make everyone... I mean, it would be hard to make Saban less excited about spending money. Yes. But if this movie (laughs) does poorly, it will do that. And so I get... I'm, I'm just worried from, like, not that it will ruin it... But that it will ruin, like, the odds that I get a Power Rangers movie every year until I die. Yes. I understand that. So, we'll, we'll see. We're still way too far out to make any kind of decision. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be uh, an interesting year or so. Yeah. All right, so an email from Kelsey. Oh. Kelsey's also a Ranger Danger super fan. Been on the show. We all know Kelsey. Yep. Uh, so... Kelsey's saying, um, she wanted, we, we asked at some point that were there any kids who couldn't tell that these episodes that we're watching or that we have watched were filmed in Australia? Yep. If there was anyone who couldn't tell the difference. And uh, Kelsey's saying that when she was a kid, she didn't know, which is even more embarrassing because she was 13 when she was watching this. Oh, wow. (laughs) Um, because it looked like to her... Near her, there's a thing called Colonial Williamsburg. Okay. Which is, like, the old Sydney town of yeah. Midwest America. Yeah, that And makes so sense. it looked enough like Colonial Williamsburg that she was convinced that it probably was filmed there. That's really interesting. 
Um, they also call that a living museum rather than a, an amusement park. That's probably a better way to frame yeah, it. Yeah, because of the lack of amusement at yeah. Old Sydney Town. Yeah. I'm fascinated that this is a thing in other places. Yeah, right? That just pretending it was a while ago is a thing that you can do and charge money for. Like, I kind of understand people who do that on the weekends. You know, oh, it's a hobby. That's fine. You're like, yeah, I'm going to pretend I'm a soldier. But, like, what do they do on Tuesday? You know, like on a Saturday when you take the kids out, let's teach them some history or some shit. Yeah. But, like, is that busy every day of the week? I guess not, because that's why there's no more old Sydney town. That's right. Exactly right. Yeah. I mean, I, I suspect... It was somewhat busy during the week because schools forced students to go there. Yeah, well, you know, you want to teach them about Colonial Williamsburg. Yeah. But I don't think that's, you know, a fantastic business model. I wonder if... Like, I'm not big on my American history. Yeah. I wonder if something interesting happened in Williamsburg or if it's just a place where there was lots of convenient space. I don't know. Because, like... And it might have been, like, someone signed a treaty or there was a big... Like, lots of historical things happened in Sydney. Yeah. So you could kind of get away with, like, this is where Sydney was. But I don't know much about Williamsburg. Well, it's important to remember, too, that Old Sydney Town was not even in Sydney. No. It was a ways out of Sydney. Yeah, well, in Sydney there's, like, office buildings and important shit. Yeah, but not even, like, City of Sydney. Yes. It's not even within Greater Sydney. (laughs) No, it's not. Oh, boy. Um, And so her explanation for the reason that all the extras have terrible Australian accents is that Saban would have paid the cheapest people possible and that was... It was cheaper to, like, bring in Australian actors to Colonial Williamsburg than hire locals. (laughs) Hang on. (laughs) Is Kelsey trying to say that American... uh, or Australian people are... Stereotypically, for acting, what South American people are for cleaning? I mean, I've seen enough television shows yeah. filmed in LA that inexplicably star six or seven Australians yeah. to believe that we may just be incredibly cheap actors. Wow. Okay. I guess there's a lot of people that are on Neighbours for a little bit. Yeah, and then, and then have they to... go and become Thor and some shit. Yeah. yeah, they have to go and do other things at some point. Yeah, and... or be on Neighbours for the rest of their lives. Those are your options. Yeah, I, it's a pretty rough turn for those that don't leave Neighbours, because it's kind of like you either don't leave Neighbours or you go on to become Thor or Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad or something like that. Yeah, well, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. Some of them are swings, some of them are roundabouts, yeah. as that expression goes. As we like to say on our, using our official podcast logo, yeah. sl- slogan. And uh, so she says, like, she's just rewatched the episodes, having listened to the podcast. Yep. And it's definitely not Colonial Williamsburg. Um, like, first of all, the architecture is like half a century off. <laughs> and uh, second of all, the trees look different. Right. They are... They are Gum trees. So. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the middle of Australia. Um, so that's Kelsey's story about Colonial Williamsburg. Thank you. I'm, I'm actually really fascinated by all of that, so I appreciate you saying that through. Yeah. Uh, so this is an email now from Brian. Yep. Matt, Brian's written something. Okay. Brian has written uh, eight pages yeah. of Ranger Danger fan fiction. Oh, boy. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm not going to read it out on the podcast. Yeah. But the reason I'm not going to do that, I almost feel like we have to perform it. What? Like, it's, this is, in, it's insane. And it has, like, appearances from guest hosts and, like, special guest stars. What? And Goldar shows up. Ah! And it's, I, I think, here's the thing. I need to acknowledge it here. Yeah. But I, I don't know what to do with it. Could we just make a small bonus episode out of it? I mean, it's going to be like 30... It's at eight pages of fan fiction. Yeah. Well, eight pages is eight minutes, though, right? No, no, no. This isn't written like a script. This oh. is written like paragraphs. Right. Okay. So a bit more than eight minutes. Yeah. So I think we need to, like, 
talk about it and figure it out. We need to discuss this to figure out what we're going to do. Okay. But I just, I had to mention it. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, we don't have sex anywhere in it. Oh, great. That's my favorite part. Brian sent it through. Yep. And before even reading it, I emailed him back and said, Brian, I need to know, do Matt and I have sex? And he said, I don't understand why you're asking me that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because our episode had not aired yet with Rick's special bonus feature. Um, so I probably should not have laid on that foot. Yeah. But, yeah, let's let's look at that later. Okay. But thank you, Brian. Yeah. Uh, you're crazy, but the good kind of crazy. I'm very excited to read this. Yeah. Yeah. I actually haven't read it. I've been specifically not reading it so that we could discover it together. Okay. That's another one of those things Rick's going to pull out for you, Slater. You understand that, right? I feel like, and I don't know if we should be having this conversation here. I feel like what we need to do is get Tim to read it to us. But if we're in it, I feel like we should play ourselves. Maybe. Maybe we get Tim to read it to us off air, and then once we've had that experience, we can record it. Anyway, yeah. we'll figure something out to do with Brian's fan fiction. Yeah. Uh, anyway... That's it for emails this week. Thanks for your emails, everybody. We always love them. And when it's such great stuff like that, it just gets me excited to open up our inbox when I check it. As long as we're not... Please don't write us having sex. I mean, I prefer it if you didn't. Yeah. I'll still read it because that's my... Oh, op- yeah, we'll play it on air because we're suckers for that kind of shit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, please don't. <laughs> please? please? On that 109, note- storybook rangers. Yes. You're going to get sucked out of a book. You know, punch a yeti and fight an elf and you laugh but all those things are going to happen this week yeah okay sucked out of a book is a bad turn of phrase I'll, I'll, it's not awesome <laughs> I'll take the credit for that one and now anything that you say I'm thinking about which fragments of it Rick is going to use yep. in a year's time when he does the sequel to yeah. his we're going to get sucked out of a book yep. cool alright we'll see you guys in just a sec Matt, there's some foolish part of me yeah. that was still expecting this to make sense. That is a very foolish part of you, Michael. <laughs> it really was. Oh, my God. It kind of takes all of the questions that we had mm. after last week's episode and then just hangs some extra questions off those questions Yep, and then ends the episode. <laughs> oh, God. Oh god We can't do too much of the episode that's just you groaning <laughs> I mean What? What the It was a very, very strange episode of Power Rangers That might be the weirdest episode ever Maybe I'd have to sit down and think about that one Because that's a big call But it's up there It's definitely in the running Yeah Oh god Okay, so Back Let's start from the start Yep they're in the snow, Tommy, yep. Jason, and Kimberly. Uh, where they, oh, sorry, Tommy, Rocky, and Kimberly, where they were last week. Yep. Uh, the snow monster is causing an avalanche. Yes. Um. Everyone else is in the command center, and they're watching that on the viewing globe because that's a thing you can do. Yes. And uh, they're going. Well, I, w- I wonder if they're okay. Apparently, it's impossible to tell if they're okay. For some reason. Yeah, I feel like if you watched a little bit longer, you'd find out. Yeah, either they're all dead or they're not all dead. Yeah. Anyway, Zordon has located the book. Yeah. At the book fair. Yep. But doesn't know which book it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure, I guess. It, it's like strange, but not more strange than anything else that yeah. happens in this episode, so fine. So the other rangers go to the book fair. Yeah. And they, like, start rummaging through all the books. I guess that's the most effective way to do it. I feel like you do have several context clues. Like, you know there's a Yeti, so it's probably not in any of the science books. Yeah. <sighs> it, it's frustrating, too, because this is another one of those random time filler complications, mm. because... They don't know where the book is. It could be anywhere in the fair. But then Aisha picks one up and it glows and she realizes that's the right one. Yeah. She doesn't find it. No. It just reveals itself yeah. to her. 
So, inside the book, um, the rangers have kind of... They're safe from the avalanche. Yeah. In, like, an ice cave. So, you say inside the book. We see this because Aisha opens up the book, and it's like a video screen yep. inside the book. Yep. Which... I, I don't understand because there's pages in the book. Is there different video screens on the pages? When do you turn the page if there's a video screen? Well, we know there is because later in the episode, oh. Billy does turn the page and there's a different video on that page. Yeah. And I don't... Like, why is the story following them with that level of detail now? They're not the characters of the story. Yeah, what's Grumble doing? Yeah. Anyway... Uh, so, yeah, they're safe in, like, an ice cave. Yep. But they can't escape. And that's a problem. Yes. Um, Bulk and Skull go full Frankenstein. Lord Zed decides that he's going to wait until they flip the lever to turn their monster into an actual monster. Good on him. This is probably my favourite part of the episode, almost. Oh, yeah, it makes the most sense. Because and you will understand how ridiculous that is when I ask Matt to tell you what the monster is. <laughs> what I like about this, though, is that Lord Zed has no other motivation for this timing. No. Except for his love of dramatic timing, yep. you know? Yep. The bit, like, he could have made it into a monster six minutes ago. Yeah. But... I might as well wait until they flick the switch. Yeah. Wouldn't that be better? Yeah. Now, Matt, what is the monster that Bob and Skull have created? Uh, it's a turkey with a computer on it. Yeah, it's the turkey jerk. <laughs> now, this... <laughs> ma- the turkey jerk sounds so <laughs> wrong. Um, this kind of makes the preceding half of the episode... Yeah. ...with all the stuff with Skull's mother's cookbook... Yes. ...make a lot more sense retroactively. Like... Kind of. Oh, yeah. I mean, I say makes sense, but I guess justify. Justify, perhaps. Yeah. Now, Matt, it, would you be shocked yes. if I told you that, okay, they've got the turkey jerk costume, yeah. and this is how they figured out how to fit it into the episode? What if I told you turkey jerk is a Power Rangers original monster? Oh, like the computer part of him? No, like the the monster did not exist in Sentai at all. No turkey? No. Wow. He's parts of Chunky Chicken. Ah, that's what I'm seeing. And other parts are original creation. Right. Because something about him looked familiar. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. Turkey jerk. Turkey jerk. I feel like if I went on to Urban Dictionary... And looked up turkey jerk. It definitely means masturbating. I feel like that's the safest option. I'm going to look it up right now. Uh, Matt, what do Bulk and Skull do when they see turkey jerk? Uh, they freak out because it's a giant robot turkey. And they run through a fence and leave, like, jumping Bulk and Skull impressions on the fence. Which, I don't know why this keeps happening in media, because that's not how that ever works no. when someone runs through something. Um, I guess my reaction is... They were trying to make a monster. Yeah. Like... And they made a monster. When they create a monster, it's not like someone goes, oh God, I've created a monster. Yeah. You sat there with a book called How to Make a Monster. Yeah. I feel like they weren't actually expecting to make a monster, right? Like they wanted to really badly and they didn't want to admit to each other that it wasn't going to work. I mean, when you get so used to failure... Yeah. The idea that you could succeed... And, to be fair, they didn't succeed. No, exactly, right? Like, it was so far outside of the realm of possibility, they must have known it wasn't going to actually work. So once it actually worked, of course they're going to freak out a bit. Um, I will say that Urban Dictionary's top definition for the phrase turkey jerk is indeed male masturbation. Great. So Glad we cleared that up. Good work, turkey jerk. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying... It's fun to say. It is. It is. It's good to say. Um... Okay, so yeah, in at the book fair, the rangers grab the book and it starts to glow. So they're like, well... That's I mean, it. One of them's glowing. So they open it up and yeah, they can see the rangers trapped inside it. Yep. Uh, trapped inside a book, trapped inside a cave. So the rangers check their morphers and their morphers are still frozen because it is too cold to morph. Yep. I was expecting that... 
at some point it would not be too cold to morph. Yeah. And the episode needed them to morph inside the book. Yes. And so they had to do like a shitty justification of why they couldn't do it right now. Yeah. They don't ever morph inside the book. No. They could have just been unable to morph inside the book. Yes. And it would not have affected the script. No. It's just dumb. Fuck you, Power Rangers. <laughs> this, Whoa. for some reason, this is too far. Yeah, I, I, I'm interested in the, this being the, like, straw that broke the camel's back for you. I just, I, too cold to morph. I mean, it froze a device. That's not... But the device, it does, it's not like the device has got complex buttons. You hold the device in front of you and yell. No, but we don't know the mechanisms inside it. Like, the morphers are devices that somehow channel the energy of the morphing coins, right? Yes, we maybe. Don't know, we don't know what's involved in channeling that energy. What mechanisms... Well, but it's frozen, so I guess it maybe it's some small ants... I don't know. It's too cold to morph, Matt. <laughs> There's machines that when you freeze them, they stop working. Fuck. Th- what machines? If you put your... If you had a toaster... Yeah. And you put your toaster in like minus 300 degrees conditions... Yeah. And then tried to turn the toaster on, it would not turn on. I feel like a toaster is specifically a device that provides heat. Okay. And well, that's like a bad example. A blender. I think a blender would work in the Arctic. I don't think, because I think the wiring and stuff would freeze up and then shatter or whatever. Well, I think I know what we have to do now. Yeah. We have to take a blender to Antarctica. Yeah. This has become Power Rangers Mythbusters, hasn't it? Yeah. I don't think that that's unreasonable. I think it's a bold new direction for the show. So anyway, Grumble shows up. Yeah. Um, Here's the thing. He, like, sticks his head down and says, like, hey, guys, are you all right? And they're like, how'd you get past the Yeti? And he, says, he says, he's trapped in his own avalanche. He doesn't, like, create an opening. There's an opening just already there right in front of them. Yes. Why couldn't they just get up and leave? Because they're dumb. But... <laughs> you hang out with Rocky too long, and bad things happen to your brain. It just... <sighs> this This show... I got the impression... That he dug a hole. But we don't see that happening. No, I guess I was being generous there. Yeah, that's... Like, you can you can say that that's what happened. Yeah. But you have to decide that that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So, they have a chat with Grumble. Mm-hmm. And Grumble says, well, if I could get those toys back myself, I'd have just left you to die. Yeah. Because uh, it turns out grouch means, like... Horrible. Oscar the Grouch would never have left a big bird to die. Michael, I think Grumble is the real turkey jerk. <laughs> Do you mean he masturbates? <laughs> we, no. said that, we said that about Mr. Tickle Sneezer. <laughs> Are they cousins? Oh, yeah, he's got dick fingers. Ah, oh, no. Oh, we need to quickly move on. Oh, boy. Um... So Tommy says, yep. in what is presented as a brainwave, but really is just more nonsense, we're trying to get to the end of the book. Yeah. What if instead we went to the start of the book? And everyone goes, yeah, like that makes any sense. But the next thing he says mm. does make a certain amount of sense to me. Because it's just a version of what I said last week, which is... We just need to have a different ending of this story. Yeah, the spell has to be lifted. Yeah. So what if we just go and convince the magician to do it? Yeah. Rather than help the orphans. Yeah. Um, this magician, though, is going to blow open our vault of questions. Oh, man. God. <laughs> if you thought that they were going to just go to the magician, and I, I was kind of thinking, like, maybe he, it's like a Wizard of Oz situation. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's really not. No. So uh, they get to a five-way intersection. The signpost has been knocked down. And uh, this is a meaningless bit of nonsense. That the signpost has been knocked down? Yeah. Because, like, Grumble just got... They just say, well, do you know which way it is, Grumble? And Grumble doesn't figure it out. Yeah. He doesn't do, like, the answer to that riddle, which is you put it back up and you know which way you came from and then you know the other ways. Yes. He just goes, oh, it's that way. No, it's that way. No, it's this way. And then 
he picks the right way and they go and they end up in the right place. It's another <sighs> bit of filler. That... Yeah, it just they could have just the next scene you see them yeah. have been there. Yeah. If they were going to end up at the wrong place, fine. That's a thing, but <sighs> I'm not dealing with this episode. But... I can tell you seem to be really struggling. It's just I think because there's a good episode. Yeah, I understand. Here somewhere. Yeah. Right? It's just been buried in an avalanche of shitty ideas. It's, yeah, been buried in the avalanche of a yeti. Now, to... now we just need a, a narrative grumble elf to bury down and pull us out of it. And as usual, there's so many choices where you could like, let's make a good decision. No, we're going to do a dumb thing instead. Yeah. Okay, everyone, let's do it. This show costs money to make. Like... Someone should care about making this show. And Dino Charge has been good lately. And it's, this show can be good. And we get this shit with fucking Grumble, the miserable shit elf. <laughs> I think that's what, what you need to remember, Michael, is that they make good episodes now. They you better know? get fucking good soon. You've got to remember that this is in the past. The good stuff is in the present. That's an upward curve. Okay. Okay. So Billy's scanning the book. Yeah. Uh, and he says, if only I could figure out a way to alter the molecular structure. Now, I'm not a chemist. Like, burning it, I think, would alter the molecular structure. Yeah, there's lots of things that would do that and presumably result in the death of your friends. Yeah. What you actually want is, like, if only I could figure out a way to create three Power Rangers. Anyway, he has to stop doing that. Uh, Bulk and Scarlet trapped up a tree. Yes. By the Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the park, oh, a turkey with a computer on its back is harassing two dudes up a tree. Uh, Rita and Zed, Zordon says, have equipped it with powerful weapons that could destroy Angel Grove. Yeah, that's one, and it holds it like a pole, but I guess that's true. Yeah. It's like a big laser. Yeah. The three rangers morph and... <laughs> oh, sorry, I just want to say two... It looks like it has a lot of complex technology on its back. Yeah. But equipped it with a weapon in this instance was just gave it a weapon. Yeah. yeah. It holds it. It doesn't come out of its back. It just has a stick. The compu- Like the circuitry and stuff on it serves no purpose. No. no. Uh, it's, it's not even like RoboGoat or Cardiotron where like at least it's got robot in its name. Yes. All right. So the three rangers morph and go... Uh, Turkey Jerk thinks Bulk and Skull are its parents. Which is a weird thing that also doesn't go anywhere. No. It's mentioned once and then not brought up again. Hmm. Uh, So inside the book, they reach the home of Mondo the Magnificent Magician. Yes. Grumble, quite understandably, doesn't really want to talk to Mondo. Yeah. Because Mondo cursed him to be grumpy. Now they got bad blood. Yeah. Uh, Matt. Yep. Lord Zed is worried. That maybe Mondo will reverse the curse. Yeah. Why doesn't Rita think that will be a problem? Because they're buds. I'm so, I'm so, I'm sorry. They're, they're buds. They're buddies. They're homies. They're what? Sorry. They they used to they used to be bros. Are you saying that Mondo is an old friend of Rita's? That's right. Matt Mondo's fictional. So is Rita. Ah. <laughs> I... <laughs> what the fuck, Power Rangers? Can I just say? I liked this only because it supports my Halloween theory from a while ago that witches and wizards now just pop- propagate throughout all of time and space because of this. Including occasionally going into books? Yes. I... What? I don't... It, this was the bit... Because that there's no reason for this to no, be the episode. No reason! The episode would be no different at all. Except it's... They throw in this throwaway line... That means that Rita now has an established relationship with, with this guy from a fictional wizard. Plus, Rita has been in a dumpster for thousands of years. Ten thousand years. So presumably, <laughs> she was not able to contact this person. Like, when did this happen? The book was written 
while Rita was in the dumpster. Definitely. It had to, had, yes. that has to be the case. Writing has happened while Rita was in the dumpster. So that character was invented while she was not able to communicate with anyone. Uh, it just... For fuck's sake. Why? I don't know. Why? He could have just been a grumpy magician. Yes. I don't know. Also, yeah. by the way, he's one of Die Ranger's leather gimp monster bad guys. Yes. I was not prepared for that either. <laughs> oh, God. He does not look anything like a wizard. <laughs> He's a guy who wears... <laughs> he doesn't at all! What the fuck is it? I've lost Michael. He's got belt buckles across his chest! Yes. Like, it's a fantasy book. Leather jackets aren't contemporaneous with the time period they've established here. You know? He has a samurai sword. <laughs> That's not a wizard <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, I, I'm fascinated by this show's depiction of wizards. Because, like, Zordon apparently at some point was a wizard. But everyone's a wizard, right? <laughs> Everyone's a wizard. You're a wizard. I'm a wizard. We're all wizards. That's... Have you got a sword? You're a wizard. You're wearing a jacket? We're all wizards. <laughs> That's the moral this of this show story. doesn't know what anything is. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so yeah, that happens. Oh, so there's a grumpy wizard who is a Japanese man with a metal face and a samurai sword. And because he's a Japanese man, we don't see him inside the book. No. He's just a moving shape behind a door who goes, fuck off. <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> and um, also... The reason he gives for not helping them out is that that's not how the story would end, which would be more of a character motivation for a quote unquote good character for me. It's like, no, we have to, we have, he has to learn his lesson and get to the end of the story because it's important for this world. Sure. But then he escapes the book and just tries to destroy another world. I mean, if I can be honest, yeah. I feel like if we're going to start nitpicking that sort of stuff, we might as well just give up. Because no part of this episode makes it... That's the smallest problem in this episode, yeah. is that the magician's motivations don't make <laughs> sense. You make a valid point. Oh my god. This... He's got like a monocle on a leather strap around his leather bandana. Yes. And a metal face. He's got a metal face! Oh my god. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Uh, Adam gets the power axe out yeah. for the last time for 15 years. Yeah, that's um, sad. Yeah, he uses it to fight Turkey Jerk. And then they're like, okay, we're getting close to the end of the episode. Let's get out the power... Cannon? Blaster? Power cannon. cannon. One of them's the power blaster, one of them's the power cannon. This is the cannon. The one that they load the balls into. Yeah. Except this week they don't load the balls into it. No. And uh, they just blow the shit out of Turkey Joke. Yeah, and the way it's played, there's sort of an ambiguous explosion. And then Bulk and Skull talking about, like, yay, they did it so much, I thought it was going to be a fake out. No, but it wasn't. just dead. It's just, just dead. dead. That's it. That's it for Turkey Jerk. Like, so often on this show... They make a whole thing about, oh, we can't defeat the monster until we get the whole team together. Yep. This side, no, it's fine. Three of them can use the cannon. Yep. Why do they ever send out more than three of them? They could take out, like, two sets of monsters at once. They just need to build another cannon. Uh, this is also last time we're ever going to see the cannon. Oh, I'm less sad about that. You know, we're near the end of the season, yep. obviously. So I guess they get, like, a ninja cannon... I don't know. God, I hope that shoots a ninja. Oh, yeah. Like, he spirals out. He's got swords. Yeah. He goes, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. That's not going to happen. No. All right. But we uh, do get ninja. So, back inside the book. Yes. Um, yeah, they try to deal with Mondo the Magician. And he's like, yeah, I'm not fucking having it. Which, again, is weird. Because he's an evil guy. Yep. 
so evil that he should be coming out and stabbing them with his sword. Mm. Instead, you mean his wand. His wand or whatever. Instead, he's kind of just being a shitty neighbour. Yep. Very strange. <sighs> okay, so in the command centre... Yeah. <laughs> um, the story is apparently rewriting itself as Tommy and the others go through. Yeah. I... <sighs> Okay, I'm just gonna... Ha- we're gonna have to accept that and move on. Yes. Um, so Adam's like, well, they have to get to the end. Maybe we can deliver the toys? And he doesn't... He's not confident about that as a suggestion. Aisha has an idea. She says, Alpha, can I have some coloured pencils? And Alpha says, yes, here are my coloured pencils. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even get them out of anywhere. No, no. They're on the bench. <laughs> Alf is like, yeah, I was doing some adult colouring books earlier. I really needed to calm my mind. Here you go. The red one's not doing so well at the moment because I did a lot of angry colouring in yesterday. Aisha draws the toys yeah. into the book. Yeah. The toys appear inside the book. Yes. Okay. She probably should have just drawn the Megazord a few pages back. <laughs> or like, oh, uh, what I've drawn is the get out of a book device. <laughs> yeah. A door to the real world. <sighs> oh, The thing about this is, and this is probably going to make you angry. Yeah. I didn't mind it because we kind of have a precedent within the show for it. Remember when they were trapped in photos? <laughs> And then someone drew moustaches on them. Yes. And when they came out of the photo, they, they had, had moustaches. Yep. To me, that's internal universe consistency. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't you think? I, I mean, I guess. Oh, God almighty. So, Grumble. Yep. He, my, he says my favourite line of the episode. He says, you kids know that old saying, I couldn't have done it without you. Well, I could have. (laughs) He's kind of endearing in his own way. And he tells them to be careful. Because Mondo the Magician is on this page as well. Which further questions. Yeah. I want to know what his conception of page time is. Yeah, like... How long is a page for him? Is it like a day? Like, does he know when he's on a different page? Can he see everything that's on the page? Plus, that is basically... Him being able to predict the future. Yeah, at least, like, locally, yes. So, if he could do that, he probably knew... Actually, he did know the story. Yeah. So, he didn't learn a lesson at the end of the story. There was no moral, because he'd already learned it. He just had to execute a practical thing. Yeah. So, there's no story. It's... I feel like the stuff that goes on with Tommy and Kimberly and Rocky... Yeah. Changes the story. Yeah. And he reacts to that. Yeah. If it was a regular retelling of the story, he would just be going... It's like doing a play. Right. Like, he just has to act out all of the bits. Yeah. Whereas what's happening now is, I guess, like, improv. Got it. Uh, Yeah, so Mondo the Magician is there, swinging his sword in the background. (laughs) Yeah, he kind of just goes ham on the background and cuts out of the book. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) The only explanation I've got, given that he is capable of that, is that he is a millennia-old wizard who, like, went into the book and killed the real Mondo the Magician. Oh, my God. And, like, took his... I don't understand why you would do that. Maybe he's in hiding. What if there was a bounty placed on his head? And right. and so he whoever was in like... Yeah, maybe it was like that police officer guy from Power Rangers Servo. Whoever it was, they're so good at tracking down people, he had to leave existence to escape. Because it's possible that Mondo the Magician doesn't appear in the book. Yep. Because he's behind the door the whole time, yeah. right? So no one really knows what Mondo the Magician looks like. Yeah, so he could be anyone. Yep. So, if you want to hide somewhere, that almost makes sense. Uh-huh. Is not support... Uh, 
It's not not supported by the text. It's not suggested by the text. No. But it, Nothing in the text contradicts it. It is almost suggested by the text in his clothes being not in line with the time. What's the, that sure. word? I f- have forgotten. Period appropriate? No, but I can't remember. Sure. Um, I don't know what word you're looking for. So, Grumble delivers, Grumble delivers the toys to the orphans. Yes. Um, the orphans look quite happy. Also, not like orphans. I mean, I don't want to Jesus characterize man. anyone. They look way too happy to be orphans. Basically, yes. Um, they just got toys from a magical elf. Yeah, but this is a storybook. Like, everything else in this story is so arch. To have the kids just be some kids is weird to me. Okay, I, I kind of understand that. Um, so now he's, his head glows. Yes. And he's not grumpy anymore. Although he's still kind of grumpy. But I guess now he's not forced to be grumpy. Yeah, he's just grumpy when he wants to be, which is Why all the time. Why would you someone to be grumpy? Especially if you're a v- actually legitimately evil magician. Yeah. It's such a lame curse. Although I guess if you're hiding in the story, at that point he didn't know that anything else happening, so he just had to play his part in the story, right? So. Yeah. So, Mondo the Magician has escaped. Yep. Luckily, so have the Power Rangers. Uh, the Power Rangers basically just get out the Mega Sword. Yes. Mondo the Magician is now giant. Yep. Um, they punch him in the face. They cut him with their sword. There's a moment where Mondo the Magician turns red for a little bit. Yep. Doesn't touch them. And the Megazord falls over. And they're like, oh, what's going on? Which is a great question. I don't know. The show doesn't know. The show doesn't know. It's just something that happened. And we've got 30 extra seconds in this episode. So, And then the Tiger Zord just punches him. And then the Thunder Megazord cuts with his sword. Yep. We've got, at most, like three or four more Thunder Megazord outings. Yes. It's not going to do that sky drop attack again, I'm pretty sure. Be nice if it got one good fight. I want to see the staff back. It's such a cool Megazord that has done so few cool things. Yes, I agree. It's really heartbreaking because visually, it's my favourite of all the Megazords. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know that it's my favourite of all of them, but definitely top three or four. But it, it is not supported by... The actual episodes, unfortunately. No, it's not. So, uh, Mondo the Magician is dead. Yes. That's a centuries-old magician killed very quickly. That must have been shitty for him. Yeah. Like, he just was in the real world for all of two seconds. If Lord Zed hadn't fucked around, he would have been alive still. Yeah. Um, I have, like... Does that mean that that story is... Over? Like, no one can read that book again? No, Matt. People can definitely still read that book. But when, pe- when quote unquote, <laughs> people do, that's not the story they get, right? <sighs> Who knows? Who knows? So, the the Rangers are back at school unpacking the book fair. Yeah. Uh, it raised a lot of money for the library. Yay! Yeah. Probably wasn't worth it, considering what happened, but that's fine. Uh, so, Tommy says, you know, I never really liked fairy tales, but this one was exciting. He's just, just because he's in it. Oh, yeah. And then Rocky was like, uh, no, it was terrible. Where were you? <laughs> the first time I've been on Rocky's side ever, man. Yeah, right. Um, because remember the Yeti that punched you both in the face? Yeah, we almost died yeah. in an avalanche. Um, so in come Bulk and Skull. Yeah. And they're all like, yeah, books are for nerds. Nerds. And Kimberly's like, have a look at this book. And they open it up and Grumble's like, hey, guys. And they scream and run away because what the fuck? Yeah. This is one of those things that it's played as like a funny prank, but is actually just another in a long line of things the Rangers have done to Bulk and Skull that would traumatize any human. Yeah, right? It's so fucked up. And that will cause lasting psychological damage. And then that's the end of the episode. Yeah, <laughs> end of episode. All right, we've probably got a couple of monsters to put on the creature feature this week, mate. More than a couple. Uh, let's start with Turkey Jerk. Yes. He's got a great name. Yes. And I kind of love that he's Power Rangers exclusive. Okay. But he does nothing and he's destroyed straight away. Yeah. He does He like, 
There's nothing computery about him. No. He doesn't do anything turkey related outside of making turkey puns. Yep. And then he goes He's not even really a jerk. No. In fact, he there's two people who he thinks is his parents and he wants to be with them. Yeah. And then the Power Rangers murder him. <laughs> I mean, when you put it like that. <laughs> uh, so, not a great villain. <laughs> no. Is he... Like, but, he's not worse than the Wheel of Misfortune. I think he is. Really? Yeah. Worse than the I Wheel... like the Wheel of Misfortune a lot more than you do. Because the Wheel of Misfortune is interesting. It was different. This guy is just, like... Almost the prototypical throwaway monster. Well, here's the deal. Below the Wheel of Misfortune yep. is Skellerina, yep. who had that, I believe, is the, had that great opening Blair Witch Project shot and then did nothing. Yep. And then Showbiz Monster, who I have no recollection of whatsoever. I, I think between those two is my gut feeling. What Do you, you remember what Showbiz Monster was? I remember having feelings about Shobi's Monster. I just can't remember what they were. This list has got like a hundred monsters on it now. Yeah. We're just approaching the point where I cannot remember all of them. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Shobi's Monster was on the episode they went on TV. Yeah, I, I mean, I was he like a camera? I can't recall. Okay. What about Snow Monster? Uh, similarly, actually, no, I think he should be the new bottom of the list. Right. Because he fails so hard that he murders himself. <laughs> when you say the bottom of the list, yep. I need to remind you, so it's, it's Skellerina, Turkey Jerk, Showbiz Monster. Yep. Mr. Tickle Sneezer. Yep. Goldar and the Dark Rangers. He's not worse than the Dark Rangers. The Dark Rangers don't kill themselves. No, but they also don't do anything. But, see, that... I think that should be the bottom, in theory. But if you don't do anything and then kill yourself... (laughs) That's actually worse, right? I mean... Although, he doesn't not do anything. He does rip into them for a little bit. What about between the Dark Rangers and Goldar? Okay. Right. He's right. he's worse than Goldar because yeah. even Goldar hasn't killed himself. <laughs> yeah, yet. Goldar's still alive. Yeah. For all these fuck ups, none of them have been fatal yet. But I think the Dark Rangers are one of those things that is a great concept. Yeah. That they don't even get to fight the Power Rangers because the show was too cheap. Okay. All right. Yeah. You've convinced me. Um. What about Mondo the Magician? <laughs> this one I can't even wrap my head around. The frame of reference. Like, he's a great design. Yes. But he's not a magician. No, but the thing is, like, design is form following function. Yes. He's a terrible design because he doesn't look anything like a wizard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, he, his role within this story was to be the evil wizard in the story. And he's a Japanese man with a steel face. <laughs> If they'd, like, photoshopped a hat onto him, <laughs> yeah. that would have made more sense. That would have, like, been the barest minimum effort to pass, but they did not achieve that. I almost can't... Like, I can't... Like, is he bad? He's a great-looking monster who, like, does a cool sword attack, but... And also cuts through reality with his sword, remember? But... He's not meant to be a swordsman. No. He's meant to be a wizard. And he's a terrible wizard. He doesn't do any magic. <laughs> except that one point when maybe he does. Except we don't know if that was magic because we don't know what it was. <sighs> Is he worse than Goldar? He's either worse than Goldar or better than most of the monsters. Yeah, that's- <laughs> I almost feel like he has to go in his own yeah, list. Yes, He No, no. He should be in his own pocket dimension on our list. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, he's getting an NA as his number, right? Yeah. I can't... When we finally get around to updating the website, though, I yeah. think he should exist in an alternate time stream on the list. 
He's not even the best monster in the book. No. And was there one more? I feel like there... Oh, I was thinking about Grumble, but Grumble's not really a monster. No, I don't think we can put him on the list. No. Although, he's very similar, obviously, in design to Mr. Seagull Sneezer. Yeah. But also, in that he's an antagonist purely by circumstance. Yes, he's not evil. No. And neither was Mr. Tickle Sneezer. Yeah. He may have been a dream. Yes. Did we get... I'm trying to remember. Did Trini give an origin for Mr. Tickle Sneezer about him being... Her weird little doll? Yeah, like uh, some sort of historic thing? Or am I thinking of a different doll monster? No, I think that was it. Yeah, th- Mr. Tickle Caesar was Trini's doll. You know, I know he was Trini's doll, but I'm thinking about like she. Had, there was like a, a. No, it was the. Was that the? Not the Babadook. The the. Uh, I'm sure there was one that was a different like type of doll. Okay. Because what I'm thinking is, it would have been nice if. Like, they tried to explain that connection briefly. So wholly unnecessary. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, anyway. Are we are we done? I don't... The thing, yeah, for me, if me, Mr. Tickle Sneezer is on the list... Yeah. Uh, that's difficult, though. Because at what point does you being in the ranger's way earn you a place on the list? Here's my thing. They fight Mr. Tickle Sneezer with a giant robot. Okay. No, you're right. They don't ever punch... Grumble the Elf. Yeah. As much as they would have liked to. Yeah. 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 Okay, you're right. Okay. Yeah, so he hasn't gone nice. Yeah. All right. Oh. Um, we made it through it. Yeah. So, next week... Yep. ...is the start of another two-parter. Um, mate, you know how we've been going back in time a lot lately? Yep. Had Rangers back in time and Return of the Green Ranger inexplicably went back in time. Yep. Next week is called Wild West Rangers. Oh. I want... I'm not going to get the Cowboy Power Rangers that I want. Yep. But in my head, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. It's really cool in my head, but it's definitely not going to be what's in my head. They've got, like, horse zords. Mm Mm-hmm. Lassoes. Yeah. All right. We can get disappointed about that next week, I I just want... Alpha to drive a stagecoach. That's all. <laughs> He's got a big hat. Yeah. Zordon's in the back. Or a little hat that doesn't cover his big round <laughs> dome disc thing. Oh, God. All right. We'll be back next week, guys. Thank or there's probably a dino charge on Wednesday. Who knows? <laughs> we'll go sleep. Thanks for your time, guys. to kill. Are you checking the sound? No, I'm recording. Okay. So... (laughs)